Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for tuning in. I um, want to say a big shout out to Adam.75AU. Way down there in the land down under. So, it's good to have you uh, tuning in and commenting and uh, hope things are going well for you guys down that way. I haven't heard anything about fires or anything, so that's a good thing. So, again, big shout out to you. Um, today's video I had to change up just a little bit from some of the things I was doing. I had a customer call me from down in the lower America and said, hey, I'm going up to the bay, up Bristol Bay, to catch some salmon. And if I'm going up there, I need a little 9.9 .9 or 15, and I need it in a short shaft for my raft. So I can go into the beach. And do the beach combing. And whatnot. Whatever they do up there. So... I said, I can put you one together. I don't have a short shaft at this time. You understand. But, I said, I can chop one down and all that. So, I went out there and looked around at my inventory. And I found a nice little one. Um, went to start it up. Starts up fine. Runs good. Shifts good. Pees good. About broke my elbow. Because the pull rope on it was about that long. So I got to put a, a new pull cord on it, and I'll kind of go over that a little bit in a bit dough. And then we're going to remove the midsection, switch out the drive shaft, switch out the shift rod, and cut to fit the water tube pickup, and slap it all back together and make this here little thing a short shaft. So that's what I'm going to do here, I've also got some other things to point out. Uh, may do a little painting on a Suzuki four-stroker. Well, at least some priming. But the weather's, mm, it's right there. Is it going to rain? Is it not? I don't know. So, that'll be that. But, uh, and again, you never know what's going to come in here at any minute. So, we're going to do that. And, uh, so... Let's get started on this little bitty 15. Alright, taking off the, we got to take off the air silencer. So you just remove those four bolt screws that go on the top. Then you take out these two screws down in the bottom of the air silencer. Pry out the adjustment knob. Then you kind of tilt the whole thing back and pull it out. Once you get the screws out, of course. Or up enough. What out of screw? There we go. I tilt it kind of back, like I said, and work it out of there. And there's your two screws. You got two screws and two washers. inside that thing. Get them off. Then we got a 9 sixteenths in bolt right here in the starter. Line this little cutaway for the wind emergency start. I find it gives you a little more room and get that 9 16 bolt out of there. Alright. Now watch it, this thing spring loaded and can go every which way. You don't want that. So just hold everything to, from the bottom of the pan and bring it out like so. Like so. This one's not under any recoil tension. So. And this one we don't care about because it's only about a foot and a half long, so. Cut that rope. There you go. And there you go. And like I said, just keep tension on that. 
then I find a nut that uh, fits on that thing. Don't go asking me what size it is because I'm not sure that I had one. Let me get you over here. Papa All right, so just put your nut on the bottom like that one. It's a 9 16 quarter 20 or something like that, I forget. And then just take the old, old line off. Which this one ain't got a lot of. And pay attention to the way that it wraps around. Should be about out of this one. Because it was so choke. Okay. That's all he had on this one. That's the end of it. So you can see that's pretty short. So now we got to get that out of there. And normally I have to pick it out of there with a pick or something. But you got to get the old one out. Take your pick. I hope you're in there. And what I'm doing here is pushing. Attempt to do. There she goes. And pick it out. So there's what he has. It's all stiff. Um, the manual, if I'm, and I'm going by memory, but I'm pretty sure it's right. It calls for you to measure and cut the new piece to 56 and one half inches long. Or thereabouts. And you want to take your torch or a little big lighter or something and melt the ends and make it pointed. Like I'm so. Make them nice and pointy. That one wasn't too pointy. I like them pointy. That's better, like that. All right. Right. Now, you put it back in there. And the manual's going to show you to tie uh, some goofy knot, leave a tag in on the end, and stick it back in that hole. And you can do that somewhat. So in other words, I just do an overhand knot. Then you want to take the tag in and kind of stick back in the hole so it's like that. And seats in there. I ain't gonna, I don't think I'm, I could show you that on film. But I just take my little pick and I'm gonna push it down in there as, once I get close. Whoa. There. Now take that little tag in and shove in the hole too. If it's possible, it's not always possible to me. But I'm gonna try it. Fold it down, stick it in there. Oh, almost had it too. I don't know, I gotta pull that out. So there we go. There. See how I did that? I stuck the tag in back in the hole. Now we cinch it down. And it kind of disappears around the sheave so there's no lump. Like a flat tire. Doo -doo, doo -doo. And then, now that the spring is under tension still, we just wind it back on. And, you know, you could take this off if it's a 
big bother to you. It ain't a big bother to me to sit here and wind this a few times. It's just not that hard. So wind her around like I'm so You're on a stand. Alright, so I'll get this done and we'll get back over there for to install it. I'll be right back. Okay, we got the line all wound back in and I took that nut that I was using to keep everything together. So now I got my hands on here. Now up under the bottom you'll see this little tang here. That goes in a hole right here. Don't confuse it with the bolt hole. That's That hole's for the bolt and there's this little hole up here. That's for that tang. Keeps the whole thing from spinning. So and now you've got these little uh, safety interlock. You got a spring. It goes behind the red thing here. This red part. There's a little spring that goes behind it. And that's the the tricky part is you've got to get this inside of uh, this part here with the spring on the back side. You'll see. You see. So that's kind of the pain to it all. So, uh oh, there's my tang. Again, everything's got to. And so this red thing has to go in that. And of course, that line's going to be right where I don't want it, so I'll move that out of my way. And there's the bolt hole. Okay. Shove it down. There's the red thing. And a spring behind it. And now we got to get that the tang in, which it just went in. And you put the bolt. So the tang's in the hole, the little red thing is behind there and you can see the little spring is behind the metal bar and the red thing's in front of the metal bar. And that's your safety interlock so you can't start it with the throttle wide open and gear and all that mess. Now as far as this thing, you just spin this up and put it in or you can it, actually you can pull that whole thing out and restick it in but I just do it that way so now that's on there here's your line you got to feed it through the little brass deal there now what do I got going something ain't right because that should have push that through there Everything feels okay, but why did that? Okay. Alrighty. Now we got to feed the line through the handle. Pull it out some. And on this one, I like to tie a figure eight so that it's a little more bulky. And then same with that one, just kind of like we did that other piece. You stick the tag in, back in the hole. Like I'm so. And so, there we go with that. Now it's nice and on the pull start. So we got that. Now, let me get this thing over on the bench and we'll start taking 
and turning it into a short shaft. I'll be right back. Okay, now I already broke these bolts loose with my quarter inch ratchet. And then what you do is you, well, I zip them out. Once you break them loose, you can use the zippy gun. But now, if you have any trouble with these, it's going to be these middle, these middle bolts. If you if you if you've got a saltwater engine and you're going to have any break off, it'll be these middle ones. Um, they can be very problematic. There's works around, but see, these these ain't too bad. But, but there's that. There's that. Okay. So you take out all twelve. Three, six, nine, twelve. Now we're gonna pry this thing down and move the shifter. I'll show you. So there's what you're after. Once you get the bolts out, take your big screwdriver, get in these cracks. You might have to start with a smaller screwdriver and then get that space. Then there's your coupler nut, or bolt rather. And you can use a screwdriver sometimes. I like to get in there with a 3 8 inch socket. and unscrew it. Is how you do it. So and then get my needle nose once and get your you should have a little washer, lock type washer there, and that. And then... Uh, yeah. And then... Bang it apart. And out comes your loha. The loha. Now, she stuck up in there a little bit. Yeah, the water tube. Well, yep. I'm wearing the hat. So you know what it means when I wear this little hat. That's correct. It means. Somebody came bearing the gifts. They sure did. So, it's Christmas in May. Let's go look. There they be. So what do we got there? We got a an older 70 with the controls. And I don't know if that one pulls over. Or turns over or is seized. But it's got the controls with it and all. And then we got a little cutie over there. I don't even know what that one is either. But look at all the you see all the moss growing on it. See all the moss growing every which aware. Appears to be seized. Oh, what is it? What is it? It is a 7.5. 7 print 5. I got another one kind of like it in a box in pieces. So they came a barren of gifts. A little 7.5 miscellaneous parts in a box. So, and a 70, so 
it's raining out right now, so I think I'll deal with them in a little bit. It's Christmas in May. Okay, now what's going on here is I took the lower unit off, and this midsection right here is stuck. The water tube is stuck down in this aluminum. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's all corroded around that water pipe. I mean, it's just welded. But all you need is a half inch of that water pipe. So I took these two splitting wedges and I just tapped them in here. And it, it's come down this far, but it's still stuck. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take my Sawzall and cut that off flush here. So in other words, you want to be as close to this. You want to saw like this, right up against this. So that you get as much of that water tube. You need a half inch of it or so. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if, let's see if we can get over here. Get the old saws all with my longer blade on it. Right up against this metal now. So there's my water pickup tube. Okay, now we want to take out these four bolts on the water pump housing. Oh, right. And then just pull drive shaft, everything, because that's. And you're going to need a rag to catch the earl on the bottom. Okay. Now, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Now, I pulled that drive shaft out, and it's a good thing I did. Even though this thing was pumping water good, I started it earlier, and it was pumping water okay. You can see that the uh, impeller is delaminated, so it could actually spin. Uh, on the shaft. So this impeller is shot. So it's a good thing we got that out of there. Now, let me take off this water pump housing. Okay, here's the two shafts. And you can see the length difference. Get them even there. So this will be our short T that will become the short shaft there we go and there it's turning the prop and there's neutral it's not turning the prop okay so that'll be our new drive staff now as far as the shift rod you just unscrew this all the way out now you can cut and re-bin that bin there you see that bin which would face that way. You can re-bend that, but I have extras, so I'm just kind of, it just threads in there. So, screw that out of there. Like so, see, it's, it's got threads on the end. And what I do with the other one? What I do, what I do? There. Took me a minute to find that hole, but anyway, what you want to do is screw this thing all the way down in there. Pull it up a little bit. That'll help me a little bit. There we go. Get this out of there. Just making a mess. Screw it all the way in. And once you get it, of course, I could have took this off, but anyway, you get the you get the other day. Okay, there's all the way. 
Now back it out one turn. That's the position it needs to be in with the bin facing forward. I think this, this one's bent a little. You know, I've told you before I like to get uh, tools if I find them in the dumpster. Um, I bring them home and, and I refurb them. I do not restore them. I just clean them up, make them usable. This is an old S-Wing uh, uh, drywaller hammer or hammer etcha, whatever you call them things. This is some cute, look at it, isn't that a cutie little ball peener? That'll clean up nice, and here's a bigger brother to it. I can see some writing on that one. It says wear goggles and says something else on there. I can't make it out. Something K. But anyway, but what I really wanted to, I need some help. Look at this saw. Look at the teeth on that thing. I mean, look at that beast. So the, it's cracked right there in the handle. And then it's missing a whole chunk. But obviously it's meant to be held like that and saw. So what I want to know from you viewers is what kind of saw is this? And what would it be used for? Looks like something out of that movie Psycho or something. Well, I was going through my YouTube comments. And, uh, somebody commented, boy, you know, it must drive you crazy with all that daylight all the time up here in the summertime. All that darkness in the winter. I got to thinking about that. Then somebody else commented below his and said, yeah, that's why that guy there, Cody, is about half loopy. So them boys might have a point. Been up here a long time, you know. So I was sitting here talking to old Fred about it. Now the thing I didn't know about Fred was that he was a member of the uh, Greater Northwest Amphibian Psychiatric Counseling for Amphibians. And I thought, well, some counseling's better than others. And I, I think Fred might be telling the truth on this one, you see, because he does exactly what them kind of quack doctors do. Every time you ask him a question, he answers you back with a question. That's what they do. So I asked old Fret, I said, Fret, you think I'm crazy? Well, you know what he said. Well, do you think you're crazy? I said, Fret, sometimes I feel a little sad, depressed, whatnot. Does that mean I'm crazy? Fret said, Well, do you think you're sad and depressed? So I realized that was useless. People saying I'm crazy and such, you know. I just don't know. I don't know what to think about stuff like that, you know. Makes me wonder a lot, though. Yeah. Makes you wonder. Yeah, makes you ponder. I wish it quit raining, though. Yeah, I just wish it would quit raining. I think, you know, that's a lot of it. 
might just be the rain. Use it. Sorry about that battery dud. Um, on the top, put the grease on the sides, but not up here on the top. That's what the manual says, man. Okay, so we've got a new impeller. We've got a new shift rod. A shorter drive shaft and a chopped off water pickup tube. So we are about ready to restab this and make it a short shaft. Let me get set up. I'll be back. Okay, we got her in the tank. Give her that. Stay tuned for part two on Inside Outboards with Cody Bass.